It is a hot O'Day summer. I mean, Apple, Adobe, Cisco, Microsoft. We're talking O'Days. We're talking patches. It's the September Patch Report. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Patch Report for September 2023. I am your host, Dustin Childs, head of threat awareness here at the ZDI, and our chief patch wrangler. We have got a ton to talk about today, and I'm going to try and get through it as fast as I can because there is so much to talk about. Let's start with Apple. We don't always cover Apple bugs, but we've got Apple O-Days hitting. Uh, this is a report out of Citizens Lab that has said, uh, hey, it's spreading Pegasus spyware from NSO again. So, yikes. Um, they patched it last week for the latest iOS as of today, that is September 12th. You have backported fixes for older versions of iOS, so make sure you get that update. Uh, Cisco advisories. Let's talk a Cisco advisory instead of a Cisco patch because Cisco, Cisco hasn't put out a patch yet. So they have an advisory for their adaptive security appliance. Um, so they've got some O-days going around in that as well as the Firepower Threat Defense, FTD. I don't know. I thought those were the flower guys. I don't know what's going on there. Uh, CVE 2023-20269, the offer mitigations. Be looking for a patch. It's definitely being worked on. It'll come very soon. Uh, but for now, just use the mitigations that they have listed. Moving on to Adobe. Super small Adobe release, but super important because we have one CVE in Acrobat and Reader, and it's under active attack. Yep, so uh, another zero day for Adobe there. Uh, this is an out-of-bounds write uh, from fonts. Uh, hey, I, I said fonts were a problem about a decade ago. Turns out I was right. I was not the only one. Uh, you got a couple other... Uh, cro the, the other two patches are just patching each two cross-site scripting bugs. Very boring. Kind of coincidental. Uh, moving on to Microsoft, they have 59 new patches. Plus, you add in the other stuff that has already been patched, the Chromium, some other external ones. And they have a total of 65 CVEs in their security update guide today. Hey, I want to say uh, real quickly, awesome for ZDI. I know I'm bragging, uh, but 15 of those CVEs came through our program, including some really important ones in exchange. Uh, so awesome that we're 25%. Hey, we got two of these that are under active attack. The first one is this Microsoft Word Information Disclosure inf uh, Vulnerability. And uh, I really like this one for a lot of reasons. First reason is the preview pane is an attack vector, so that always makes it more exciting. Um, second reason is it's an NTLM relay. So I would kind of call this a spoofing bug more than an info disclosure bug because you're spoofing an identity, but you're also disclosing an Intel, Intel NTLM. Those are real letters in our alphabet. Uh, you're exposing that hash, so potato, potato, tomato, tomato, whatever, just patch it, okay? Definitely put that on the top of your list. We'll talk about the other one as it comes up later. It's not nearly as exciting. Uh, the next one that I really wanna call out is this Azure Kubernetes Service Escalation Privilege Vulnerability. We've seen bugs like this in the past, um, and it allows a remote unauthenticated attacker to gain cluster admin privileges. Uh, and I haven't seen this exploited in the past yet, but this one could be reached from the internet. Uh, so it's a little bit more severe than the other ones we've seen. So kind of cool. Uh, moving on, we've got this ICS bug that's an RCE. It's highest rated CVSS at 8.8 .8 this month. But the thing to remember is internet connection sharing is not enabled by default. So we got that going for us, which is nice. Um, beyond that, if it is enabled, you're probably going to get hit by this because it's a really simple sort of thing. Uh, but I don't know how often you really are using ICS anymore. So just take that with a grain of salt. Uh, before I move on to everything else, I do want to highlight uh, just this one here because it just makes me nostalgic. It is this bug in Windows Themes, Remote Code Execution Vulnerability. Um, and if you're saying to yourself, boy, that reminds me of screensaver bugs from decades ago. It's like, yes, it's exactly like that. You send somebody a janky theme and they load it up and boom, re remote code execution. Uh, I can't believe we're still seeing this. Uh, props to Thies and Dan from uh, Compu Computer Sector 7. They're uh, pwned to own winners. So just really cool to see that. Moving on, you'll see the other uh, actively exploited bug right there. It's a streaming service bug, but it's an elevation of privilege. And it just gives you system 
So not nearly as exciting as the NTLM relay, maybe more practical. You could argue that, um, but it's just an elevation privilege. The remaining critical bugs are all in Visual Studio. They're open and own sort of things. Lots of importance. Let's get down here and let's talk about Exchange. I know, I, I know, I, I know, I, I know, but we have to talk about Exchange. Yes, we just passed last month. And look, we got five more bugs here in Exchange. Uh, there's a couple RCEs. There's an NTLM relay that I mentioned for Exchange. Uh, that's kind of like the word one. This one's called spoofing though. So let me be pedantic. That's okay. Um, there's another one that was patched last month, we think, but wasn't documented. And now it is. All of the bugs this month do include, uh, uh, do require authentication. So we got that going for us. But remember there was a bug last month that was an auth bypass. So if you don't have August updates, you're even more vulnerable now. Uh, and yes, you have to apply the August update before you can apply the September update. So if you were putting off the uh, August update, stop. If you're putting off the September update, don't do that. We see active attacks in exchange happening all the time. Um, please don't do that. Uh, so take a look at these very carefully. There's a lot to go through. And if you are patching this weekend, I wish you Godspeed and good luck. So moving on to a few other things, we've got a bunch of RCE bugs. Most of these are like open and own. So you get a document, you open it up. Uh, there are quite a few RCE bugs in 3D Viewer uh, from a researcher, a ZDI researcher, Matt Powell. They're simple open and own bugs, but the product itself is open, is updated through the App Store. So if you don't have App Store turned on, you need to make sure that you're doing that uh, or manually updating. Um, there's also an interesting thing, like we think IE is dead. We think Internet Explorer especially doesn't exist anymore. It still does, it's under the hood. They call it Trident or Edge HTML. And that's where you see the scripting uh, bug that comes in. So definitely take a look at that. You can still render things in the IE engine, whether you want to or not. Uh, let's move on to DOS, because I do think there's a really, really important DOS bug here. And that involves TCP IP. Yes, I know there you just spray some TCP IP out there and you could potentially blue screen systems. If you have IPv6 enabled, no, not even configured, just enabled according to the documentation that Microsoft has pushed out. So uh, obviously IPv6 is enabled by default these days. That's a problem. I definitely want to take a, a look at that. Uh, there are some mitigations listed in the bulletin. So review those if you want to, but the real thing to do is just uh, a test and apply the patch. Um, if you are not running IPv6, maybe consider disabling that at the time being. The funny thing is the other DOS is in DHCP, which, you know, limited DHCP addresses is why we got pushed to IPv6, blah, blah, blah. It's a symbiotic relationship. I don't know. It's very strange. Moving on to the EOP bugs uh, this month, all the escalation privilege bugs this month uh, lead to system. And that includes this uh, CVE 2000, 236802 and the streaming service, simple bug. Um, it all these bugs either lead to admin privileges or system. And yes, I'm being pedantic with that because there really is a difference between admin and system. Okay, fine. Uh, but yeah. Uh, and then we've got a couple security feature bypasses. And the first one, oh, this drives me crazy, these security feature bypasses. Windows Defender Attack Surface Reduction. What do you think the bypass is? Yep, it bypasses the attack surface reduction blocking feature. One job. So yeah, that um, that bugs me. Uh, the other is Office, and that could allow uh, dangerous extensions from being uploaded and downloaded. Um, the preview pane here is an attack vector, but it's not automatically showing up in the preview pane at what it is. So what it actually is, is in the preview pane, you actually have to click on the attachment to say preview attachment, and then you could potentially uh, do some nastiness. So keep that in mind. Info disclosure bugs are pretty simple this month. Uh, only two exceptions, you know, it's random memory, heat memory, whatever. The first is an outlook, which could uh, allow the disclosure of the credentials. So yeah, that's a good one. And again, the preview pane is not an attack vector here. So that's good. So the other one is in the Microsoft Identity Linux broker. And I just gotta say, as someone who's dealt with Microsoft since the late 90s, saying that there's a Microsoft patch for a Linux thing 
I, I would have I would have been hit with a shovel, you know, 15, 20 years ago. But uh, yeah, here it is. Now, what's really interesting is you could exploit the target uh, to get data at rest. But if it's encrypted data, it's still going to be encrypted to the attacker. So that you have that at least. There's one lone moderate rated bug in the release for office components. Um, and it's just allows an attacker to spoof some malicious content, a couple cross-site scripting bugs, and uh, that's about it. So a big day, a big month for O-Days. We didn't even touch on the one in Google Chrome because there's not an update for uh, Edge Chromium yet. But uh, yeah, update your Google Chrome because there's an O-Day in that as well. And I'm hearing talk of other O-Days uh, that are out there floating. Folks, you need to patch. You need to shore up your defenses. Whew, it's, a, it's an interesting time to be in network defense. But hey, it's a lot of fun too. So that wraps up our September uh, patch report. And uh, October 10th is the next Patch Tuesday. I'll actually be coming to you from our office in Dallas, Texas. So we will be on the road for uh, Patch Tuesday. And I will see you then. And until then, stay safe, happy patching, and may all your reboots be smooth and clean.